All right, so this is the uh, redone setup. It's fairly similar as the first uh, test circumstance. What is new is I have an AC compressor. It is not wired up to work, so it's just going to be uh, just spinning. So I guess you could argue, yeah, you know, this compressor is gonna eat like, you know, a horsepower or two, even though it's not engaging the clutch, you know, that's some expensive horsepower. Um, this is obviously the Gen 3, 7875, 125AR back housing. Got the exhaust coming out here, and it goes down kind of through here, through a sleeper exhaust. Um, pretty short exhaust. We got a 5.3 uh, junkyard operation. I mean, all that was done was gap the rings and it's just slap back together. Uh, engine has not changed at all. Heads have not changed at all. Intake, all that stuff has not changed. So everything is fundamentally the same. Uh, transmission have a 4L80. Uh, it's got a, a um, extreme automatics 4L80 with their uh, trans brake. Um, it only has lock up and forth. Circle D 258 millimeter converter. I think it's like a 3600 or maybe 3800 stall. And um, fairly basic operation. So we'll get to uh, the dyno. All right, so I don't really have that great of video. Uh, I was mostly just busy hitting buttons on the keyboard to make this car work. So I'll show you guys kind of the progression of uh, dyno hits and ultimately what power I ended up on. And I'll walk you through a little bit more of the technical stuff too of how we got to the power, what was going on. Um, but anyways, this first hit was a very simple one. Uh, this was a, a quick hit on the wastegate and just let off at about 5200 RPM just to make sure that straps are all good. We have a decent tack reading and... Uh, you know, my car doesn't fly off, all that good stuff. And you can see here, um, about 5 PSI the whole way. So I was feeling pretty good. Um, at least that the boost control was working and that it didn't go any kind of crazy amount of power or run away from us. It's kind of sad. I mean, only 400 horsepower and 5 PSI for uh, this motor. But it is like a 300,000 mile sludge pup 5.3. So, is what it is. Here's the uh, view of the data log of that first pull. You can see our closed loop, which is right here. That is kind of uh, the instantaneous fueling correction. It's all within about a percent, which is about as good as you can ask for. So, the fuel map is really good. Um, if you look at the uh, duty cycle, 50% duty. So, right now our injectors are happy. Boost also showing 5 PSI. We got good oil pressure. And finally, target dome uh, is set to zero the entire run because, of course, we are on wastegate. So not a whole lot to see on this one. Uh, this is about 60% content at, we'll call it 22 degrees for that dismal 400 horsepower. Let's see the next one. So... This next pass kind of caught me by surprise, and I should say, not pass, I'm so used to being in the track. This next uh, dyno run caught me by surprise. So you can see here, uh, this one, we'll call it 600 horsepower. The torque is pretty uh, dismal, but again, that's uh, more a function of me rolling into it and not trying to nuke my rods. But uh, the boost really got away from me here. Um, we hit all the way a max of 12 and a half pounds of boost. For 600 horsepower at uh, max 460 torque. And we'll take a peek at that log. Uh, so we can look at this pass. So again, targeting a 12-0 air to fuel. This yellow line following the pink one is the uh, commanded versus actual air to fuel. And it's pretty happy. And this teal line here is the boost. And again, you can see it running away uh, 12 and a half pounds. And scary enough, my target dome is zero. So the boost controller isn't even working. That's purely just creep. And uh, apparently I smashed the rev limiter here. So I didn't like that either. But uh, what are you going to do? You know, I wasn't expecting it. We went from like no power to a considerable amount. 
Uh, closed loop compensation, apparently threw a lot of fuel at this. I'd rather be on that end than not enough. So it was busy taking quite a bit of fuel out, but uh, not a whole lot of interesting things to report on that run. Um, the next one, I ended up just turning on boost control because, I mean, there's no point in dilly-dallying around. Let's just uh, make some power, you know, especially if it's going to run away on us. So um, this is about 16 PSI, and this is about 650 horsepower, well, 653, and made a good bit more torque. And I think a lot of that is just a function of me stabbing the throttle a little bit sooner and a little bit harder a little more of like a stab the throttle instead of rolling to it so that's why you see the torque up quite a bit um and then also i mean more boost as well right so uh it's kind of interesting here because you can see the power kind of becomes unstable up top here and that the torque actually drops off where the previous run the torque is pretty much flat the power is increasing linearly. And I'll show you what I found in the data log here. This is pretty interesting. Um, if you look, I'll turn this off here to better explain it. So again, pink line is the commanded AFR. This yellow squiggly line is the actual AFR. And if we look, closed loop compensation, it's pulling 10% out, which is really not ideal. Um, the fueling should be closer than that, and when the Holly has to correct that much, uh, it, it's just not a good situation. Um, your injector pulse width becomes kind of volatile, and if you click this here, this new pink line is the injector pulse width, so it's kind of all over the place, and that really affects your power when you don't have a good uh, hand on fueling. Um, even though the average AFR is decent, it just wasn't smooth fueling. And that's why you really have that kind of jagged and uh, losing torque. Um, I think also, let's see what we're doing with the ignition timing here. Uh, ignition timing, so that's going to be dark blue. Yeah, so you can actually see it kind of falling. Um, so in the later runs, I believe what I did is I tapered the ignition timing um, later. Like once we hit like... 5600 RPM is where I start to taper the uh, ignition timing back in and it seems to like that I'll show you uh, the next pull here if I can figure out my computer and let's get rid of some of this stuff here we will close that one maybe not The computer is messing up. There we go. Okay. So this next run is in orange. And I had a little bit better grasp on the fueling. I cleaned it up a little bit. Um, and you can see that the boost is pretty much the same. Uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference. The peak boost was in three-tenths of a difference. And for not being on CO2, it's about as good as you're going to get. Uh, what I was trying to do here is just clean this little section up here, and I think I had a pretty good grasp on it by this next pole here in red. So you can really see um, from the green to the red, we picked up quite a bit of power. So we went from 652 to 675 there, and uh, this is a lot more linear as well. And if you look at the torque, Torque is just considerably uh, increased compared to two runs ago. So you can see here we were 530 torque, now 550 torque. This uh, run in red is cleaned up fueling, one extra degree of timing, pretty much the same boost. Um, I mean, it did gain a little bit of boost, so maybe I, I sprinkled in a little bit, but it's more a function of just cleaning up the tune there. Um, let's see what other runs we got next. I think we'll just go right to uh, this guy here. Uh, and actually, I'll show you the uh, 
Do I have the data log in that one? I don't know. Anyways, um, this is one of the later runs I had. 703 horsepower. And that was almost at 20 pounds of boost. And you can see it does something really funky. Let me clear out some of these older data logs here. Older sessions. Yeah, you can see here it just like barfs. So something happened here. And I forgot what happened actually. What happened? Oh, yeah, so I remember now. Uh, this is with the Dika 60 injectors, which is not an ideal situation. Um, I'm only doing this because, you know, I have safeties and stuff set up, and me being the guy on the keyboard, I kind of know the limits. Um, this particular injector can go to 20 milliseconds pulse width, and then at that point, it's just done. So you can see... We're at 18.9 and 96% duty cycle in the injectors. Um, and then all of a sudden we hit 23 milliseconds on the pulse width. And the safety comes into play and it just says, no, nah, we're not going to do this. And uh, I get shut down there. And then I pretty much lift at that point. So uh, best I could do was 703 horsepower. And that was at uh, 20 pounds of boost, which is kind of crappy. Um, at a later point, I did end up putting in Dika 80s and optimized the timing of the track. What that makes power-wise, I have no idea. Um, it seems to be trapping about 145, so it seems like now we're in the 800s. Um, I don't know. But that's kind of my explanation of how the dyno session went. Long story short, uh, this new turbo does not seem more efficient until it's at like, I don't know, I don't think it's that efficient at all, to be honest. Um, the old turbo seemed to work better, but at the track, it's interesting. It seems to do a lot better than the old turbo, so I don't know if... We're just reading low here. Um, keep in mind, this is uncorrected. I could switch it to SAE, whatever. I mean, it, that's just the power it was making then and there. Um, hopefully that's a ramble that, you know, someone cared about. But that's all I have to say. Um, right now, the car is living at 20 PSI and might go a tad bit higher on the scramble. But that's the new setup. Hope you enjoyed.